In this video, I'm going to show you how to create polar rose patterns using JITGEN and JITGL mesh. Polar rose curves are curves that appear when you add a specific mathematical formula in calculating polar coordinates. So we are going to see how we can implement polar coordinates, how we can convert them into Cartesian coordinates, how we can do all of these in JITGEN, and then add parameters to generate multitude of different patterns and change these frequencies and ratios to change the patterns themselves in real time. Let's begin. First of all, I want to make sure I know polar coordinates well by creating a bunch of little points and arranging them in a circle using, well, polar coordinates. So for this, I'm going to create my JIT.world context. I'm going to name it rows for this video. Let's uh, give it the usual FSAA and floating attributes. Let's turn these on and I can also give it a nice background color. Let's say a uh, nice dark gray. Okay, and then I'm going to create a toggle by pressing T on my keyboard to turn this on and just to make sure it is running at a good old, good frame rate, a good old 60 frames per second. I'm going to create JIT.FPS GUI as an FPS meter. Okay, now to visualize uh, the matrices I'm going to create, I'm going to use JIT GL mesh, which will generate GL geometry from matrices. So JIT GL mesh is going to accept one or more jitter matrices and it's going to turn that information into 3D geometry, 3D shapes, GL geometry. And I need to specify a few things. First of all, as always with JITGL objects, my rendering context, which is rows. I can also use the draw mode attribute. I can give it the value points. So the incoming matrices are rendered as individual points instead of the default tri grid. If you don't know what that is, that is fine. We are not using tri grid right now. I can uh, change the size of these points by using the point size attribute. Let's make it three instead of the default one. And I'm going to give it a nice, let's say a bluish green color. Now, when I create this, nothing appears on the screen, of course, because I need to give JITGL mesh the information it needs, right? And just to showcase it, I can use JIT.noise, uh, three planes, this is important. It needs to be three planes. So each cell has an X, Y, and Z coordinate, JITGL mesh, and the world of JITGL uses Cartesian coordinates. Other than that, let's give it the data type float32 as always and 100 different values. So in this case, 100 points. I'm going to create a button connected to the inlet of JITNOISE. And if I click this, as you will see, I get a bunch of random points on the top right of my rendering window. And why is it on the top right? Because JIT.NOISE will give out random values from zero to one. And in my coordinate system here, zero, zero is the middle. so the range between a zero and minus one on the X and Y axis are not represented on these random points. But still, as you can see, this is how JITGL mesh with the draw mode attributes set the points will interpret these matrices. So what happens if I create a, just a good old JIT dot matrix? Let's again, give it the same attributes. Uh, so three float 32, 100. And now when I click this, I'm getting this single point in the middle. Well, actually this is 100 points, but since this is an empty matrix, it is just uh, all 100 points at the coordinates of zero, zero, zero. But I can work with this, right? So I can create one of my favorite objects, jit.gen, jitgen, which uh, I can connect the output of JIT matrix to JIT gen and then the output of JIT gen to JIT GL mesh. Uh, right now, this is going to give me the same result because JIT gen is not doing anything so far. So let's change that. Let's go into JIT gen. And uh, as you know, or as you will remember, or as you will learn, JIT gen or the gen environment is very similar to the max patching system, but there are some differences as we are going to see just in a second. Okay, so let's explore polar coordinates, right? How do polar coordinates work? Let's make this our big patching window and I'm going to create a comment right here. So polar coordinates. Now, when using polar coordinates, which is a coordinate system, not unlike Cartesian coordinates, I need to know two things. First of all, I need to know what my polar radius is, right? And that is if this is my center point, how far am I from the center point? The angle right now does not matter. It is just the distance from the center point uh, at the coordinate I'm trying to reach to. 
And after I notice, or before I notice, with this polar radius, I need to know my polar angle. Right, and that is simply a rotation from the center point, taking the center point well, as our center, and I rotate around the center point based on my radius. And as you can see by my mouse movement, this immediately creates this circled shape, right? If I just have the same radius and I'm rotating by uh, different angles, I will have the shape of a sphere. And if I know these two things, I can define a point in a 2D space by using polar radius and polar angle. But of course, uh, Max or JITGL or JITGL Mesh will not think of the incoming matrices in terms of polar coordinates. So I have to convert this information to Cartesian coordinates. There already exists an object, an operator, as it's called in JITGEN, that deals with this. Uh, I believe it's called pull to car convert polar values to Cartesian, but I'm not going to use this. I really want to implement the formula for this, right? And to do this, I need to get the cosine and sine of my angle and multiply it by radius. So what does this mean? To get my x coordinates and Cartesian coordinates, I need to take my radius. I need to multiply it by the cosine of the angle. And to get my y, coordinate, I need to again take the radius and multiply it by the sine of the angle. And since this is a three uh, matrix with three planes, I also need the z value, but for now I'm just going to keep this zero. Okay, good. So, uh, and if you're wondering why this is cosine, why this is sine, I would say do not worry about this right now. This is the formula, we are going to apply this. So our radius is currently unchanged, right? So each point is going to have the exact same radius. So I can declare this as a parameter. And let's say its default value is going to be 0 0.5. Okay. And now I need to calculate my angle. Now there are two ways to think about angles, right? We can either think in terms of uh, degrees or radians. And max, by default, is going to think of angles in terms of radians. Radians, uh, in the case of a circle, uh, go from 0 to 2 pi. So if I rotate around the center point by 2 pi, I will have gone 360 degrees. Right, so I need to have a different angle for each point. And I can do this by this little technique right here. So first I'm going to create the norm operator, which is going to give me the normalized coordinates of the input matrix. Since this is a one dimensional matrix, right? There we only have 100 cells and not 100 by 100 or 100 by 100 by 25 or something like that. Norm is just going to give me, let's say zero for the very first cell, one for the last cell and values between zero and one for every other cell in between. I can simply multiply this by 2 pi. And this is something I can only do in gen, the gen environment, right? I can say multiply 2 pi because 2 pi in the gen world is already defined as a constant. And if I do this, now each cell is going to have a different angle uh, going from 0 to 2 pi. So I already have all the elements I need, right? Polar radius check, polar angle check. So let's implement this, this little formula to convert the polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Let's see, so what I want to do is, well, first let's get the cosine and sine of our angles, right? And uh, then I will multiply this by radius and I'm going to use the same trick. I'm going to create an operator. Objects are called operators in JITGEN. And I'm going to say multiply radius. Now, since radius is defined as a parameter inside this specific JITGEN operator, it is going to accept radius as an argument to the multiplication operator. I can also do the same thing with sine. And now I can just pack these values into a 3D vector. So vec 0, 0, 0. And then the first two values are going to be my x coordinates and then my y coordinates. And then the last one is going to be the Z coordinate, which stays zero. Okay, so let's see what happens. If I bang this, we get a circle. Fantastic. I mean, this is probably not that interesting right now, but this is the beginning of something really cool. So first of all, I want to automate this by taking the middle outlet of JIT.world, which is going to send a bang on each frame. I'm going to send this with the name Metro. And instead of using this button here, I'm going to use R Metro to 
So the moment I change, I change a parameter or something in this JitJet patcher, the results are immediately visible by JitGL mesh. So I can immediately, if I want to play with the radius parameter, I can create a message box radius dollar sign one, and I can create a floating point number box, and I can put in any value I want, and it is immediately going to be reflected. Right, I can even change it like this. I can go to the minus values, etc., etc. Okay, good. Now let's think about how we are going to do the polar rows, right? And if you look at the Wikipedia article, for example, we see that a rows or a polar rows is a sinusoid specified by either the cosine or sine functions with no phase angle that is plotted in polar coordinates. Now, to me, this sounds like a complicated math stuff. So I want to instead look here. I want, I want to replicate this nice picture. And there's a nice description here. These are roses specified by the sinusoid R, so radius, uh, equals cosine of K times theta. Theta is another name for angle. For various rational numbered values of the angular frequency, K equals N divided by D. And then after this, we have a bunch of mathematical stuff. Once again, roses specified by R equals sin. Uh, sine of uh, k times theta are rotations of this roses by one quarter period of the sinusoid in a counterclockwise direction about the pole origin. For proper mathematical analysis, k must be expressed in irreducible form. I cannot stress how uninterested I am in mathematical analysis right now, so I'm just going to take this very first sentence. Right, so how does this work? So we have to take a uh, different radius for each angle, right, uh, for, for each point. So I need to implement this formula in, into my calculations. So let's do this. Let's go back to JITGEN, and I'm going to cr create another comment box here. So now my radius, or R, is going to equal the cosine of this value K times angle. And k equals to a rational number, right? So this one value divided by other value. I think it was expressed as n divided by d. So I'm going to need two values. I need to divide one by the other. Then I need to multiply that by my angle, angle of each individual point. And the cosine of that value is going to be the radius I use for these calculations. And what this will do is, as I have said, it is going to create a different radius, a different value for each, uh, each point, which will make it possible to have these cool, complicated polar rose shapes. So let's start by adding two new parameters. So param, instead of n and d, I'm going to call this uh, frec1. Uh, by default, this can be one, and I'm going to also create another parameter, frec2, and that is also going to have the default value of one. Okay. And to get my k value, what I want to do is to divide frequency one by frequency two, right? And this is my k value, and divided by d. Okay, great. And then I have to multiply this by my angle, and I know my angle is this, right? For each point, the normalized value times two pi is my angle, so I can multiply this angle by my k value. Okay, so far so good. So this is k times angle. Whoops, let's go back. There we go. So this is k times angle. And after this, I just need to take the cosine of this. And an optional step is to then multiply this by my default radius value to define the radius or the size of the entire shape. So I can again use times radius here. So that what happens here is uh, radius times cosine of k times angle. A lot of mathematical formulas, but it gives us the result that we want. And then after this, what I need to do is then simple, right? So instead of when I'm turning uh, this polar coordinates into Cartesian coordinates, instead of multiplying the cosine and sine of the angle with the radius, I multiplied with my new radius or the R value I received by using this formula. So I'm going to leave the multiplication operator empty so that I can use this value. All right, and this already creates something different, doesn't it? Now we, have, we do have a circle, but it's a bit to the right. It's a bit too small. I believe the radius parameter is still going to work. 
but it's like the center point is a bit different. Okay, so let's set, set this back to 0 0.5 and let's mess around with the frequency one and frequency two parameters. So frick one dollar sign one, frick two dollar sign one. Right, so, so once again, I can create floating point number boxes. Okay, so by default, this was one to one, right? So what if I do two to one? I get a nice pattern, cool. Three to one, four to one, five to one, six to one, 10 to one. I can also mess with the second frequency, 10 to two, 10 to four, 10 to five, and I'm immediately getting these super cool polar rose patterns. And if I want this image to be more detailed, instead of using 100 points, I can use 1000 points, right? And you can see these images are getting a bit more filled. I can have two to five, four to five, two to six, any kind of ratio as possible. And I can even do something like two to 0 0.1, which will give me this very dense pattern. It's not so pure, there is not a lot of resonance, but I can also rotate between these numbers, create more intricate shapes. Now, there's just one more thing left. If I look at this image, right, I can make it a bit bigger. I see that, okay, and so this is D, this is N, so one to one, one to two, one to three, which works well. But if I try to do, let's say, one to four, I don't really get this shape. So one to four. And this shape does not look like that shape. It looks like it is part of that shape, that it is, if it continues, it will probably create something like this, but it does not create what we want. Now, to fix this, we can use a little trick, which is as such. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my frequency one and frequency two, and I'm going to get the maximum of these two values, right? So the higher one of these two values, right? And I'm going to multiply my uh, normalized coordinate by that value. So if the ratio is one to four, I'm going to multiply it by four. If the ratio is uh, three to two, I'm going to multiply it by three by using this logic. And this, if the number is higher, is going to make it so that the range of angles are larger than two pi, right? Maybe it goes up to three pi or four pi or eight pi or 12 pi. And this will give you a more filled out pattern. So if I do one to four again, I have the pattern that I want. And once again, I can move around in this pattern. I can change these numbers, which will give it some kind of animation, a feeling of moving towards these values, which you can very easily sync with the MIDI notes or audio or analysis of a certain video or any kind of data. This can be a very useful tool in creating these intricate patterns that go along with uh, music or data analysis or visual ideas. And for example, just to show you, I can use a line object, give it zero dot as an initial floating point value, which will create a ramp between two values. And I can use a very specific syntax, the syntax of line, which is my starting points. Let's say the frequency one starts from two and a comma, and then my goal point, which let's say is five. And in how many milliseconds do I want to reach that point, which would be, let's say 15 seconds. So 15,000 milliseconds. That is first frequency. And while this is happening with the second frequency, I want to go from, let's say uh, six, comma, I want to go to one, also in 15 seconds, so 5,000 milliseconds. And if I trigger these both by using this button, look what happens. Really nice animation of these polar rose patterns changing, merging into each other, changing into something else. Beautiful. Really beautiful. And I, I especially like how when the ratios are pure or purer, you get more and more uh, pure patterns. But if it's something really vacky, something that's really off, the patterns become more complicated. So feel free to use this and turn it into something that you really like, right? For example, you can try to add a z-axis, Z try to really make this shape 3D. You can explore the other inlets and other parameters, other draw mode attributes of JITGL Mesh to uh, see if you can visualize this in any other way that points and just have fun with it. Try to create something really creative, cool, and awesome. Thank you for watching.